Why is a closure in JavaScript like these panels from Scott McCloud's book Understanding Comics? I read this book recently and thoroughly enjoyed it, but the moment closure was mentioned, my JavaScript addled brain started lighting up. I thought, that's funny, I wonder if it will have similarities to closure in JavaScript. As it turns out, the concept of closure in storytelling and just generally is exactly like closure in JavaScript. And I think it's summarized well by Scott as the phenomenon of observing the parts but perceiving the whole. Take this panel for example. There are a lot of small isolated parts here that by themselves don't mean much, but they bring with them implied broader context or concepts. We have money, which by itself is just some ink and paper or plastic, but when bundled with its broader context serves the purpose of facilitating the exchange of value. Same with the photo, just some ink and paper, but the shapes on that paper become bundled with the implicit existence of real people that exist in a broader context. The same concept applies to this card and whatever company it is from, and even the logo on the card which is a symbol that gets bundled with the broader context of whatever company this logo represents and perhaps even what ideologies and values the company supposedly embodies. So let's look at concretely how this applies to closure in JavaScript. Let's implement one of these closures in JavaScript, specifically the money example. The basic idea of a closure in JavaScript is simple enough, at least at a surface level. Take this function for example. We pass it a value and we just log that value out. When the function is executed, a variable will be created in memory. And after the function has finished executing, that value can be cleared from memory. No closure is formed here. But let's say instead of just logging the value, we return a function that can be triggered at some later point to withdraw money from the account. The function we are returning has access to its surrounding state or lexical environment. The lexical environment is a structure that represents what variables and functions the function has access to. By returning this function and holding a reference to it, it will force our balance variable created in the parent function to be held in memory, even after our parent function has finished executing. This makes sense because we now have the ability to trigger this return function at any time in the future, and it needs to be able to reference and manipulate this value in memory, which was made available to it through its lexical environment. A programming language doesn't have to make values available in this way, but JavaScript does, and that's what a closure is. A closure bundles a function with references to its lexical environment. As you can see, I can trigger this function at any time after the initial execution of the parent function, and it retains access to the same balance variable in memory. In fact, we can see this closure explicitly if we add a breakpoint when we call our function. We can then step into the function call, and we can then see what variables we have access to through the closure that was created. This is one form of closure in JavaScript. Although we typically see closure in this form of a function returning a function, it is still possible to create closures in other ways. It is possible to create a closure without explicitly returning a function at all, and it's possible to create closures with lexical environments that aren't a parent function. Let's take a look at the general definition of a closure provided by MDN. A closure is the combination of a function bundled together, enclosed, with references to its surrounding state, the lexical environment. In other words, a closure gives a function access to its outer scope, which is really just a more technical programming flavored version of the more general definition of closure from Scott, the phenomenon of observing the parts but perceiving the whole. Perhaps we could make that more JavaScripty by rephrasing it as the process of using the parts but having access to the whole. We can directly connect our JavaScript example to Scott's panel. The money in the panel itself is like the inner withdraw function we returned, it is the isolated part that operates within some broader scope. In the case of the comic panel, the broader scope or lexical environment or surrounding state is within the reader's mind. There isn't a need for an actual functioning bank account here, just an understanding of the concept for the purpose of telling a story. The closure is formed through the reader's knowledge of what money is and how it functions in society. In the case of our JavaScript function, the closure is more explicit. 
The broader context is provided through the implementation of the parent function, which provides the lexical environment for the returned function. Anyway, I found this connection interesting, and although it might not particularly add to the technical understanding of closures in JavaScript, I still think it is useful to understand concepts from different angles and perspectives. If you found this video useful or interesting, a like or subscribe before you go would be greatly appreciated, and I hope to see you back here for the next video.